It's been a long while, hasn't it? Anyways, good day to you people, my name is Thomas, and welcome to the third episode of Game Talk, the show where I talk about games and uh, we have a nice little chat about them. So today, in this episode, I'd like to um, cover something that is easy, since really, we haven't been doing, this show hasn't been active for a very long time, so why not bring it back with something fresh, and then we'll move on to some more heavier type of things. So in this episode, um, I like to talk about the Xbox 360. It's been one of my favorite consoles of all time ever since I got it. In, I think in 2006. Wait, did it come out? I need to do, do my proper goddamn research. Such as what? Anyways, that doesn't really matter. But um, ever since I got it, I've been ha I've been having a blast with so many games, and and quite frankly, they're all um, the ones I've got are all good. Well, except for one on the shelf, well, and I'll talk about you sometimes. I think you can fucking escape from me. Anyway, so for this um, episode, what I like to do is well, you can already see it in the title. Talk about my top five favorite Xbox 360 games. The festival some rules. This is my opinion. Opinion. Keep that le word in mind. My opinion. I I respect your opinion. If you have a different opinion to these games, I am perfectly fine with them. Them. So don't go to the comments saying things like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? You you, 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 you want some kind of drugs or something?" So have we got it all cleared up? Okay then, let's get the show started. Number 5. Sonic 06. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. The bitch must be cleansed. But remember, opinion, keep that in mind. Any oh, the stupid blooming light. Anyways, I already um I already covered this in um in my first game talk episode, which you can probably find on my channel. Go and find it. You'll find out. So I'm just gonna give you like a quick rundown and uh to to say why I like it. I like the characters. I like the stages. I like the music. I like the final music. The missions are interesting. The stages are interesting, and that's pretty much all I'm really gonna give away. Are we cool with that? Yeah. Okay, we're cool with that. Alrighty then, let's get to the other games. Number four, Diablo 3. I probably should have also mentioned that um, I'm only going to include one game per franchise, but since I forgot to do that in the recording, I might as well say it here. So anyways, this is a one game per franchise. Anyways, back to the list. Um, This is probably the only kind of Blizzard game that's going to be on this list. So but here we go, Diablo 3. What can I say about what can I say about this game? I can probably say it's most unique thing. It's it has new content throughout each playthrough, which means every time you replay the game, it doesn't really give you the same kind of items. The items are always random, which actually um inspires me to keep playing it to see how many um different items I could acquire. And speaking of like armors and type of stuff that leads me to customizable gear each gear holds different kinds of stats for the characters that either boosts their strength or you know doesn't really help them in whatsoever which is actually a really good concept thing to do in rpgs another thing to add to the list of you know why it's my favorite is because of its classes you get to choose four different types of classes the wizard the witch doctor the Barbarian, and the Demon Hunter. I usually play as the um the Demon Hunter, because, you know, he was the first character I ever played, really. And, and, and now, the most important thing about this game. It never ends. Kind of. I really don't know how to describe it, really. I mean, it does kind of end with the campaign, you know, with you killing off the final boss and such. I'm not really going to give away too much spoilers for this. Um, but the thing is, is that it provides new challenges and encourages you to keep playing. The maximum level you can reach for your character in this game, not including the DLC, is level 60. Yeah, level 60. And each time you play through it, 
like I said, you get new stuff each time. I mean, just look, have a look at my chest. Look at the amount of legendary items I have completed throughout my adventures through this game. It's kind of hardcore, really. Number three. Prototype 2. I swear to god, I can already hear the people getting their pitchforks ready to stab me through the heart. But remember my opinion. Okay, let's get going. Anyways, the reason why I like Prototype 2 is it, one of the stuff is is the location. The original prototype was set in Manhattan, which I don't mind, but with Prototype 2, it was it felt more detailed, more you know, interesting. New York Zero. It was all apocalyptic, kind of. All buildings were run down. Like, you could see many posters of people rebelling against Blackwatch. And, yeah, it just felt more kind of realistic type of thing if this did actually happen. Also, I felt like it had a better plot than the first one. Now, don't get me wrong, I liked the first prototype. It was really good. But the thing with Prototype 1 was that I was not very keen on its storyline. It was just really, yep, I can't find my memories. Let's go and talk to these people. Oh, wait, they're trying to kill me. And then eventually you find your memories. So it's not... Uh, I don't... Nah. But with Prototype 2, it was, it was all about revenge. However, I'm not really saying that Prototype 2 had a bet, had it will have more uh, that the plot was very, very good. I would say it's mid average. I mean, don't get me wrong, it still has this thing, it still has things that, like, you know, are not, you know, doesn't really make any sense and stuff. It doesn't really get more backstory to this, but whatever. So, anyways, the story is more about revenge for your family and how tragic it is. I mean, pretty much the whole, pretty much James Haller's. Um, life in this game has been rather tragic due to the virus, which actually makes you bond with the character, slightly. And speaking of James, I felt like he had more character than Alex Mercer, really. Alex Mercer in the first game was... Uh, alright. With James, he had more personality. Well, uh, it's very hard for me to say that because literally he all he's, he only has two personalities, really. Anger and no anger. But it's mostly anger. I mean, seriously, if you could play a drinking game of how many times he swears, your liver would be completely destroyed. Anyways, the gameplay. I love the gameplay in this. I just love it how you get to fly on top of things, run up buildings, and do not care about any kind of human life. Well, I suppose, really, you're not really human either. And it's just absolutely amazing. And the powers, oh, I freaking love the powers. You could cause so much destruction on them. And they're very well detailed. Um, my favourite is especially the blade. It can make you feel like an anime character. And speaking of powers, it also had a... Really, I think it had better powers than the first prototype. The first prototype gave you, like, a lot of powers. And really, some, most of them were just pretty useless. With prototype 2, it, it lowered it down a lot. But it was still fun to play. And it's especially... The tendrils. My god, these are blooming awesome. You can feel like a Japanese tentacle monster when using these. What? If you, if you, have you guys never thought that? Is it just me? Okay. Yeah, okay. I, 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 see, I, see, I see how it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The one final thing I would like to point out about this game is its music. It's very hard pumping and it gets you straight into the action right away. You want to go up and tear everything in your path. Number two. Assassin's Creed Rogue. I mean, who pretty much didn't see this coming? If you guys have been watching my YouTube channel for a while now, you would have noticed that i done an Assassin's Creed Rogue playthrough. And I freaking loved it! It was so interesting to see how it's like from the Templar side of things, from this whole war that's been going on. And it's, and it's so good that really it made me think differently about the Assassins and the Templars. I'm kind of stuck in the middle now, just, and, you know, who really is the good and the bad guys here? Which is probably the same for Shay Patrick Cormac. Throughout the whole story, he experiences what it's like to be with the Assassins and the Templars. And, well, you know, he eventually stays with the Templars, but I can tell from his face that, like, you know, he doesn't really know which side is really good or bad, the Templars or the Assassins. 
The level design in this game is another thing that also intrigues me about Assassin's Creed Rogue. In Assassin's Creed 3, it shows, well, it practically taken the same place, New York, but with Assassin's Creed 3, it made New York kind of lifeless and boring. With Rogue, it actually made it feel more alive, more pre-century New York, and it was very interesting to have a look around in it. And also, the Arctic. It was what, it's the first Assassin's Creed game that allows you to go to the Arctic, and it, you know, it doesn't, you can't really expect much from it. I mean, pretty much it's ice. But my god, it looks really, really beautiful and how it's designed. If you play the final, you know, bat, um, game, well, sequence in Rogue, you can understand where I'm coming from. The music that also comes with the levels is also interesting to that I should point out. Pretty much all of these games have very interesting music. And especially with Rose, my god, it's very hardcore, it gets you right pumped into the action, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the music. Also, the gear in the game is very interesting to see. It The gear looks very well high detailed, I like the new outfits in this, however, they don't really provide much, you know, extra abilities, well, except for one, which was the Assassin's Killer outfit, in previously in number 4, where some of the outfits provided more stuff. It seems it doesn't really have much for Rogue, but the gear is still interesting to see, and yeah, I get, I guess that that's another reason why I like it. However, with all these good things, there are a few things that I wish could have been improved, like the story. It only has six sequences in it, and it makes the story rather short, really. I mean, even though the game does feel like a very long game um, when you first play through it. But when you go back to the sequences, it's very short now that uh, now that I think about it. I mean, there's only two se two missions in sequence six and five, I think. Yeah, there's only no sequence. Fuck, I've, I've totally messed this up. But anyways, it, yeah, I just wish it had more kind of sequences. The first two sequences really well are you with the assassins, and the only time it really starts getting into the game is in sequence three. So that's pretty much halfway. It's not that good really in my opinion another thing that could have also improved was the boss battles i mean in, in each assassin's creed game the boss battles had a little had some kind of interesting point to them assassin's creed 3 you had to chase him assassin's creed 4 you had to go through a, a scary mayan maze puzzle type of thing with number with rogue uh, it, it was more just run it, it was sort of similar to three but except with three yeah, in fact, it was pretty much the same as number three. But the thing is, is that with number three, it didn't really care much about the boss battles. It was just you had to assassinate. With Rogue, you had to face them in some kind of way. And really, all they are is just run down and catch them. I wish they could have put more something interesting in this, because you are facing your old friends. Uh, the only kind of interesting boss battle, really, I've had was with Chevalier, the first guy you have to kill. But despite... Um, all of this. I still really think it's a good game, and I think that it has a good place on this list. And finally, number one. Transformers Fall of Cybertron. Ah, this one. This one goes to all my heart. To all you Transformers fans. I am a massive Transformers fan. In fact, in fact, if if you look at my box, I've got like pretty much a lot of Transformers toys. Look at it! Look at it! But anyways, back to the game. It's a te it has intense action and accompanied with the music, it makes it even the more sweeter. I enjoyed every single playthrough I went for on this, and it's also based on Cybertron, their home planet, not on Earth, but Cybertron. So the in so the designs are more interesting, and it's really original to you know, where it is placed. on It's actually set on a different planet, an alien planet. The, and speaking of Cybertron, that means all of its weapons are, cy are fully cyberized and stuff. The weapon designs are very interesting. It's nice to see what each one of them look like and what they do. And the final battle. Ah, oh, I fucking love the final battle. It takes place whilst you're flying to this portal and it takes place in space and all the tense action in it it just makes you so pumped you don't know what's going to happen you hope for the best and you hope for loads and loads of destruction but that's not the best part about this game 
the best part about this game, well, in my opinion, is its multiplayer. Now, Transformers games with multiplayers haven't really been the best of friends, really. I mean, Transformers War for Cybertron was probably the best multiplayer out of it for its time, and that was a really good game as well. It allowed you to customize your own Transformer, give it some weapons, weapons, add a bit of recolor to it, and yeah, you're pretty much ready to go. But with Fall of Cybertron, that is when it took it to a whole new level. You get to put different kinds of parts to your characters, give them different kinds of weapons, give them different kinds of abilities, and, and different colors. You know, it's not, it's not really original, really. And the DLC, oh my god. You can literally transform into a different type of Grimlock. You could be the second generation Grimlock. If he was a Decepticon or, you know, had wheels for his arms and such but that's not the point um again the multiplayer is so much fun yeah even though you do find a lot of 11 year olds and 10 year olds screaming at the mic saying you hacker and stuff i mean that's pretty much what i have to go through on a daily basis really every time i play this game but it does not matter if i like the multiplayer game it that's all it needs to satisfy me because this game has already satisfied me on so many levels and i think that you should really try this game it's bloody amazing i like it how it's all set out and the uh, and yeah that's pretty much it so those are my top five favorite xbox 360 games like i said this is not really you know a very interesting episode um because really i haven't really been doing one for a while and i haven't really got that much of an important script but in the next one it will have it's going to be way more interesting i'm currently um writing the script for it so you can look forward to that but anyways if you enjoyed this episode of game talk why don't you like comment favorite and subscribe and leave down a section in the comments to see what your opinion was um, in these games do you like them or do you think there were some other things i missed out Anyways, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.